Welcome everybody, it's Harry Box of the Technical Creator at TechCreator.com. It's Saturday, the 24th of February. This is the weekend webinar. Another fantastic week on Wall Street. The market is getting heated and overheated perhaps, but the market always goes further than you think it's going to go. And let's not guess tops until we see a reversal of, of some magnitude. Now, at this point, the S&P 500, from the November low here to the high on Friday, a new all-time high, has advanced 25% in just three and a half, almost four months. The annualized that, I'm talking about a 75, 80% gain. <laughs> Market can't keep that up. So look, here's the bottom line. We've had multiple waves up. Um, we popped out on Wednesday uh, on the Invi NVIDIA earnings and the uh, AI re revolution. And it's you know, fueling the market. Um, how far would the thing can go? A blow off or a run up to the top of the channel at this angle could take us as high as 5,300 in that range, give or take. Um, but I'm not necessarily calling for that. Bottom line is we need to be extremely cautious up here. This is the S&P. Look at the NASDAQ 100 with uh, many of the top uh, NASDAQ generals feeling the, feeling the way, specifically NVIDIA market. And it took off. Now, Friday was a negative day for it as a reverse off from Nominal new high and closed down 67 on the NDX or about a third of a percent. Nothing tremendous, but I would watch Thursday's low. And that's a 17.8. We go below that, we have more vulnerability to 17.6 and 17.4 for starters. On the upside, the surge could take us to 18, two, three range, 18 and a quarter, something like that. Looking at the transportation um, and the IWM, note that they both have not made new highs. Um, and there's a double top on both as well. Now, that could be problematic. We need the um, Dow Jones uh, Transportation Index to get up through uh, 2000, uh, excuse me, 16,220. And then you're looking at 16,656, something like that. But for now, if we don't get that and the triple top becomes major resistance and starts to roll over, it could have a negative effect on all the other industries. The IWM or small cap index looks the same. To a double top, even though it came down hard for a few days, it did bounce Thursday, Friday. Now, again, uh, this has come a long way as well. The IWM has been up 26.5% since this low, from there to the high. And the um, transportation index, which we just showed you, is, believe it or not, the le least of those indices only up 22% from this level up to that double top. So we'll just have to see where we go. These, these are still bullish configurations. And especially if the transportation small cap index take off here, that could lead to a big run on the market, a short covering frenzy, and a spike up, blow off in the market, which is really what I would like to see. But we're heading into a period coming up now in um, March, uh, April, May, that could be more difficult. Uh, but it is an election year, so lots of cross currents are uh, in, going on, not to mention interest, interest rates, et cetera. We'll have to. Uh, be really um, vigilant going forward and monitor the markets and the action carefully. Um, now we'll look at the underlying technicals. The oscillator, McClellan in particular, which I follow closely, um, is a almost dead even flat. Wait, let me make sure that. No, that's not correct. Oh, it's pretty close to flat anyway. Plus 21 is a neutral reading for the market, just slightly positive. You know, when you get to be to the top of that range in the one. 5180 area up there, that's when we're historically the market's been overbought. And historically, when we're down in the minus 250, 280, 300 range, we're oversold. We're neither here. So if the market does get a blow off follow through and we get this oscillator above 150, 70, 80, that's where I'd be much more concerned about a top in place, possibly. Now, the percentage of stocks above their 40 day moving average is also problematic because it's only around 50%, which means the market may be making new all-time highs, but only half the stocks are participating. That's um, significant divergence of a negative nature. Right now, this has come down in a one, two, three, four. We could have um, either blowout up back up towards 80 percent if the market does get a, a blowout phase or failure here, and we come down pretty hard in terms of the percentage of stocks above the 40, which would mean a rollover is underway potentially. Now, what about the VIX, which shows fear? Well, there isn't a lot of fear in Wall Street, is there? Usually when this runs up into a an area in the 20s, 30s, even 40s or higher, take a look historically what, the, what this has done. Back in 2000, of course, it reached an unprecedented level of 85.47. We haven't seen 
that uh, other than the 2008 uh, financial crisis crash, where it got in that mid in the 80s as well. Most of the time when you're getting into the 40s and 50s is where the market is at substantially oversold enough. Right now we're plus 13.75. We're at 13.75, I should say. And historically, um, something down in the high teens, high, high single digits to low teens is a number of which the market is um, showing um, enthusiasm and lack of fear. So that's something that's currently happening each time we get a spike up, it goes right back. So we'll see uh, when, if and when the market gets, the, the VIX gets over say 18 or so, that's where the market was, could start to accelerate lower and this thing could accelerate higher, at which point the UVX, YU uh, and UVIX might, might be intriguing uh, ETS, but we'll talk about them later. So those are some of the underlying technicals. And I wanna show you the NASDAQ 100 generals in particular, this is important. Take a look at Apple, which has made no headway whatsoever since it peaked in, the, in December. This has been a poor year for it. And um, not only that, but if you take a look at the training range, it's only 17 points in the last three or four months. This is a uh, in about a 10% range, which is not necessarily unusual. Apple's turned into a, a much more of a um, com commodity type stock than it is a tech stock, but Nevertheless, it is a very big component of most of the indices and does indicate or affect market le market leadership. Um, if we crack and it's a triple bottom on it, a quadruple now, around 180, 179, 80, and this thing goes down in the high 160s, it leads the market lower. On the other hand, Amazon, right at the all-time highs or near it, just fractionally below the all-time high, 175, 39, finishing 70 cents below that. Um, your follow through or target on the upside would be 180 and 180, 187 for next targets on the upside, if there is an upside extension or, or blow off. Google, um, pretty similar to Apple, but not quite as, as weak, although you can see the double, double, double bottom in here. Uh, we don't want this on Google to take out 138. You do that, you take out moving averages, trend lines, and price support. And, you're subject to a much deeper retrace, perhaps to 130 or, or even less. But for now, it's in an upward configuration. If we get a breakout to the upside, your short-term targets are 151, 155, 159. Microsoft, um, in a long, long uptrend that's, that's seen it go from November of 22, when it was trading about 215, to about doubled. It reached uh, a high of 421-ish and backed off. It's currently just under 410. You can see it just broke out of that wedge on Thursday and then stalled Friday. But an upside extension could get you to 440 or 445. I would think short-term support, and it's a big one for me, is about 393, 395. And that's a picture, a quick look at Google. Uh, my Microsoft, sorry. Um, up next is uh, Netflix, near new near new all time highs as well. Reached Friday before last. When it tagged, no, it wasn't the all time high. Sorry, it was, it was a two year high at five ninety six. Going back here to the all time high in twenty one, we reached over seven hundred. But you can see the recovery has been phenomenal. And right now it's in a one, two, three, and this is way four rising flags. So we could very well see another six, 650 or better in the next few weeks if we get a blow off in the market in particular, or just an extension. Also as strong as Meta, which, not, which exploded about three weeks ago in earnings and has been in a rising flag ever since. It could go into vertical mode into the mid 500s. If, uh, again, if the markets want to go higher and they want to run this might be one of the leaders. NVIDIA, obviously market leader. Look at that move. And then a reversal. Now, it did reach a new all-time high at 823.94 for finishing about 50 points off of that, 786. And even, even with that, it was still up $1.52. But it closed near unchanged after being getting that kind of a run. So I'm thinking short-term overbought. 
Nvidia has gone from 473 7 oh, to 823 oh, in that doubled but about 85 90% gain just since the January low and the rising top line is also near at around eight and a half uh, so we'll just have to see what they want to do with this baby and the long long term channel tops is about a thousand probably split that stock again um tesla is the, the lone star negatory and look at this chart this is now broken down below support it's in a downtrend it's forming a bear flag unless tesla gets over 203 with, with energy it could roll and if it does roll 184 177 163 all potential targets on the downside as you can see that's a very negative pattern okay let's move on to um take a look at some of the major ETFs we follow the SMH or semiconductors pretty impressive led by Nvidia I reached a new all-time high on I believe that was an all-time high by far a new all-time high on Friday where it, where it tagged 213.36 and backed off five points but still uh, and actually goes negative on the day which could be a reversal as well I, if I were you uh, I would be watching closely this level around 206 move under 206 and we're right there at 208 change could lead to a quick hit down towards 200 or 198. And any move underneath this area here i think would be trend reversal under 193. you got to be careful though because there's a rising channel here that's a little bit below that too uh, nevertheless a big move uh, nvidia just since november about one i mean smh 136 to 213 about 77 points 33 percent gain just in the smh uh the financials fax that we follow closely uh, had a very strong rising channel after forming some sort of inverse head and shoulders breakout run consolidate and run again the mid channel line which is very strong right now has a target about 109 the upper channel is like 122. very powerful move underway and more importantly multiple tops were taken out late, late in the week which could extend this quite a bit so um, I think the market's overdue for a pullback. I said that for two weeks already, and we did get minor pullbacks here and there, but nothing uh, major yet. And the angle of ascent is quite steep. If they can accelerate, they can blow off, and that would be a place to exit positions and and put put up some defensive measures such as bear ETFs or uh, outright shorts. Some of the box of shorts or speculative shorts I've recommended are very intriguing here. We'll go over them a little later. Okay. So um, that's the FAS. And what about biotechs? Well, the XBI and the LABU look at the breakout above the January high. XBI, which was as high as 94.32, um, tagged 95.50. A new, um, it's the highest level in almost two years. But a massive base could support a huge move in biotechs. If we get a market blow off, I think biotechs could lead the way. I really do. Should be interesting. And here's the LABU for kicks and giggles. Not quite the same. Um, it hasn't even taken out the January high yet. 142.19, currently 137. So it has work to do. I prefer the XBI anyway over the LABU, um, but both in pretty solid trends after breaking out of these coils that we're in for a month or so. Now, the gold sector, um, GD, GLD, is much stronger than the others. Um, you can see the pop on Friday, but still in the confines of the trading range. And when you see the others, you'll see why I'm not excited yet. In the GBX. How different is that? And, and a remarkable downtrend while the GLD is bouncing off lows and look, looking much more lateral than than the uh, GDXs. You get JNUG and Nugget look the same, if not worse. So, nothing to do with there. Um, silver, same, if not worse. So, I'm going to avoid precious metals like I have been, and uh, you guys can always ask me what my opinion is on it, but I know a lot of people out there love the precious metals, think you're going substantially higher. They might. The long-term settings are there, but it's early, in my opinion. Natural gas, 
in oil. Let's look at oil first. Here's the USL. You can see it's, it was in a one, two, three, four, five wave corrective, it looks like, after one, two, three, four, five wave down. If it fails here and oil starts to come down, this could really fall into the mid and low 60s. The breakout, however, here above the high reached last week, say above uh, 74, could lead to 78 or so, maybe higher. That's the USO, here's the UCO, they look similar. And then we have Gush, completely different pattern. I wouldn't say completely, but it's different. But finally, after multiple waves down, it started to bounce. But see, this one has got multiple resistance up near 35, 36 zone. We'll have to get through that for this trend to turn on oil. Natural gas, well, oil has gotten absolutely thrashed since November when it was trading in the 80s. Sorry, near 70, and dropped down into the mid teens. As a matter of fact, the low was. Recently, 12 and change, wasn't it? Let's see, 13 and change. Tried to bounce and pull right back. For me, I'm going to need this uh, to get over 17, 17 and a quarter with energy. So I wouldn't count my chickens on that one just yet. And then KOLD, the bear ETF for natural gas, you can see why that is a lead. And I did have a difficult day on Wednesday, but it got right to the trend line. It's trying to bounce. A move under 127 and a half would be reason to either go short or go along the boil so that's, that's a look at oil gas gold and silver and um let's go to the charts we have a lot of longs and some shorts to take a look at as well we'll start off today with abv which has been a beautiful rising channel since november lows taking it from 137 to 178 and more, more importantly a almost two-year long consolidation range was taken out and now project this possibility that we get near 200 on Abbey if this keep continues. What a dynamite trend that is. ABUS, a low price a junior bio, popped, wedge and popped again. Now it's flagging. What's pretty intriguing to me, three and a quarter and four type targets. Another junior bio is ADA, ADMA, which um, since the October low when it was trading at three and change has uh, gone to five. 46 and now flagging here for the last month or so. Um, extension target and a breakout would get me up to a six and a half, seven. AEHR, I'm showing you this only because it was such a favorite of ours, but right now it's on my short list. At least for now, it looks like a one, two, three wave four is forming. This might very well see nine or 10 bucks. I would look for eventually around $10. Um, let's just see what it does here, but it's right now a very weak pattern in my mind. AEO, one of the major uh, retailers with a fantastic chart. There's several of them, but this one has gone from 10 to 23, and it looks like it has more upside, 25 and 28 targets. AFRM, one of our uh, swing trades, on the precipice of getting hammered. If it gets below 30, I would say 35 and three quarters, and it's right there, it could really get hammered, so be careful. Keep a tight stop in this one. Long term, however, it looks like it's even, even though it's got a one, two, three, four, five way move, that's one of the reasons why this pattern is less reliable. But if it does break to the upside over 50, 51, it could be a monster. LAR, nice rising channel and then accelerating. And right now it's out of one, two, three, four, looking for a fifth wave, looking for a move to 16. Alpine um, came out of a base and it's now out of one, two, three, four, and fifth waves underway, well underway to the point where it's almost exhausted. Target 36, seven. LRM, nice base breakout, a run up. You can see the long term target tells me 78 may be doable. It's currently 70 and a half. AMD, well, if NVIDIA goes and the market rolls, this should be a monster. I think it has upside potential of 222.25 and maybe 244.45. ANF, probably the strongest retailer in Wall Street. There's quite a few of them, but look at this one. In May of last year, this was 22. It's currently 122, running 100 points or fivefold in the last eight or nine months, around nine months. Pretty impressive. ANNX, low price puppy, broke out of an inverse head and shoulder with a breakaway gap and flagged. Now it's wedging and flagging again. Some resistance of six and a half. My target's eight. APG in the um, construction engineering group, very strong rising channel. If they're breaking out and flag it here, a wedge, pop, wedge, and pop again. Now it's long in the tooth with multiple waves up. And it has gone from 12, 13 range into the mid-30s. 
but I think it has energy to be high 30s or more. APLS, now we put a swing on it after it popped and flagged, it then pulled back and tested, ran up and flagged and broke out. Net net from the lows in October when it was in the mid 30s, it's gone to set plus you know, more than double to near, near 74, and now it's coiling. I don't think this is done yet. Looking for 74 and 80, 80 85. APLT popped um, the week before last, and then last week consolidated. Beautiful rising channel, but it needs to probably some consolidation time, I think. If it does get momentum and pump, punches through and fills this gap here, you could see A and even 10. APP, app 11, when I'm loving app, as this thing broke out and now it's wedging, I think this could be you know, high 60s, low to mid 70s. ARM, breakaway gap, exploded, pulled back, and now it's got a flag. Watch this carefully next week. If ARM takes out 138.5, it might run right back at that 155.65 range. ARQT, a tech trader swing, broke out. Coiled, popped, and now it's flagging. Beautiful and a sharp rising angle of ascent. This one tells me that um, 11 and a half and 13 might be extension targets. Now, ADC with a V bottom breakaway gap and then a platform broke out and now it's wedging. Looked really good setup, I think, for more. I'm looking for a move to get us at about 15, 15 and a half, and then 17. AUTL breaking out of a base, retested, popped, and falling wedge. And then it ran up sharply and then had a flag. It broke out again and now it's right on the trend line. I'm looking for a retest of that double top of seven and a half and then maybe nine. AXGN ex exploded out of a downtrend back in November and it never looked back. Then finally it had a falling wedge, breakaway gap, and another falling wedge and then a run up. It's at resistance here. A move to this level, however, my target is 13 and a half. AXTI exploded on Friday, broke out of the downtrend and, and a basing pattern as well. There's your base breakout. There's a gap up here, so you may find some resistance, but your extension target is six. BDRY, the um, ETF for the dry bulk group, very, very strong pattern, led by F FRO, GOGL, and SB, uh, ST, no, Star Bulk. Anyway, bottom line is it's a one, two, three, four, fifth wave up. We, it might extend towards 17. BMR, well, of late, the stock was a monster. One huge day here with 152 million shares taking it from 2 to 35. Well, obviously, you're never going to sustain that. Now the falling wedge. I like the look of this, but I wouldn't anticipate. I would wait for a movie. For starters, you need over 11 and 3 quarters of energy. And then you might see 15 and 17, but stay tuned. It's going to be a wild ride. C, 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 C. It went vertical in December, pulled back, and then popped and formed the falling wedge. But since then, after holding the moving average at 50 and testing 5, it's gone to 9. 9.5, actually, my target for extension is 12 and a half. CELH, well, I like this company. I really like their product. But this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's breaking out. I think we can head up again and reach into the 80s and 90s. The CFLT coming out of a base, breakaway gap, rising wedge. If we can get it up to here, my target is 38 and 44. Uh, Cognite, I've been high in the stock since it broke out back in April uh, and then flagged. And I started to run up to my target. It came down and a falling wedge broke out again. And then another wedge to the moving average and a run up right now has the stock on the verge of a breakout, in my opinion, that takes it to 9 and 11. CBLT broke out of an inverse head and shoulder base. It tested the trend line, popped and flagged, and then broke out of the flag, and now it's running again with some energy. I think it might extend short term and test the high, post IPO high at 13 and change. CLS coming out of a base, rising channel, and then accelerating. This is one strong chart, folks. Celestica could very well see mid tide 40 short term. CLSK in the um, crypto world, it's extended, but it is flagging bullishly. If it does get any momentum movement further, you might see 20 and 23. Coherent broke out. We put a swing on it and then backed off. It's wedging right now. I really like the look overall of that base. It's broken the long-term downtrend. It might be headed up towards the mid-70s. That's this area of key overhead resistance. Collegium, a biotech stock I've been following for many years, broke out 
wedged and popped on Friday. I think it extends. I'm looking for a move to 39. Koya, as you know, I like this company. And um, with now the chart, it looks awesome. After breaking through a triple top recently and pulling back on inside day, Thursday, Friday was a terrific day for the stock. Doesn't trade a lot of volume, but you can see it's historically solid volume for the stock. And I'm looking for 11 short term. The CRBP exploded, tight coil, and tried to pop. We couldn't break out. Let's take this out for a minute and show you the ascending bull coil. That's what you call this. We're looking for a move above 29, 9.5 to get this into the 40 range. Credo pops out of a base, forms a little wedge, runs up, pops, pulls back and tests, and then goes. We put a swing on it, ran from 18 three quarters into the 24 range. And backed off for the engulfing negative reversal day Friday. However, all time high territory and looking for more upside into the mid 20s. CRNT of this little low price stock broke out of a massive two year base. I think it has designs and being four and six. Great looking chart. Uh, I think pullbacks are empty or uh, buy opportunities. Um, Chronetics with a massive pop and pullback, we put a swing on it, and then moved from the mid 20s to 40. Backed up a little bit by targeting out 43 and 46. CRISPR. Now this was a tech trader swing when it broke out here. It did very well. Then it coiled for a while. Right now it's a swing again for a move. This one went from high 60s to over 90 very quickly. Key to short term support 77, resistance 91.2, target 96 and 102. Conteo, major breakaway gap in a wedge at Pop Thursday. Kind of inside day Friday, really quiet. It backed off key resistance up here. And the eventual target is in the high 30s. Carvana, well, after multiple tops formed over the last six months, massive breakaway move on a good earnings report Friday on 40 million shares. I think the stock makes it into the 90 range again. 80 and 90 are targets. Dell, uh, tech trader swing from back in September when it was in the mid to high 60s, has made it to over 90 and meet, met, met all of my targets. Um, I think it does have some upside energy and might blow into the low 100s, so. though. DraftKings, been a tech trader swing for a long time after breaking out of the base here, ran up the target and it consolidated, ran up against the target and flagged, broke out and ran up again to the target and now it's pulled back. It's met three targets and it's really acting well technically, of course. My next target is 52 and then 60. DRCT, low price, thin stock. Is it down vertically from two and change to over 17? It actually, right, reached 18 and a half. It's consolidating, but it's very explosive and thin. Just to give you a heads up that if this goes, we might see mid and high 20s. DRS in the um, aerospace group, really a beautiful rising channel, is waiting for the coil to break. It did. It then came down and tested a reverse for an engulfing reversal day. I would look for 23 and 25 on this one. DWAC exploded, wedged, popped out, pulled back, and now it's wedging again. Well, if they took this wedge out, this thing could be 60, 70, 80. One of those wild and crazy stocks. EOLS, nice base, breakout, beautiful wedge, tech trader swing. A nice flag is formed over the last few weeks. It tried to break out of four, about 14, tagging 14.10, but then backed off. Should you get to 14.10, I think this accelerates, and then I'd be looking for 16. With this being a new angle of the set. ETHE, well, that and GBTC, with the Bitcoin and crypto stocks running, uh, have reached the top of the channels. I would be very cautious up here. I point pop consolidated. We put a tech trade swing on it and then moved from 19 and change to over 30. The high was 30.99. Now it's coiling. If it gets through this level here, 31, we might see 36 and 39.40. Fate, as fate would have it, broke out there and has been running ever since. My target, eight and a quarter, nine three quarters. FRO and the shipping group been very strong. FRO, no exception, broke out and pulled back last week, but I don't think this one's done. My target's high 20s. RPT, beautiful base, breakout flag, and a Friday broke down flag. I think this can extend. 
I'm looking for um, 103 to 105, maybe 5.15. FTAI, and I hadn't noticed this stock before, but what a run this has had. 17 to 58. It broke out of a coil on Friday and popped at a gap. Ended up about 6%, but new all time high territory by far. Clear ceiling ahead potentially, but got to be careful up here. It's lofty. Fusion, nice little junior biotech break out of the base. Spike up and wedge, spike up and wedge. Now looks like it wants to extend. Looking for 17. 16, 17 zone. GANX broke out of its base across these declining tops line through the moving averages. We tested in a falling wedge. Broke out and ran through resistance and now pulled back in another falling wedge. It looks like to me a one, two, three, four. And I'm looking for a fifth wave to six and a quarter. GBTC was the other uh, crypto stock I told you was long in the tooth and extended, but has momentum, both that and ETHC. GCT tech trade a swing, beautiful breakout, a nice run up, wedge popped out. Nasty day on Wednesday. I don't know what happened here. I think it was earnings. Went from 35 to 20. The next day was back up to 32. Friday was a consolidation there. You can see resistance here. Get it to 35 and a half, 36. And we're looking at low, mid, and high 40s. Geo, tech trade a swing, broke out here, broke out again through resistance, ran up to my target, flag popped, and it's popped again on Wednesday before pulling back on Tuesday. I think, though, that if it gets above 12 and a half, 14 is your target. GNK in the shipping group, uh, beautiful base and at resistance here. Should it get to this level, this can go vertical. Keep an eye. IDYA, great long term chart for this biotech stock, and it continues to run. Next target, 50.52. Hi, MNM, another biotech that broke out has been running beautifully, holding its trend line to take out the high with a recent high and resistance near just under 27. So that's your target. And then 34.5. IMBX, yet another biotech that ran sharply. And now it's got a tight coil near the apex. If it pops, low to mid 40s. IOBANCE, well, that one certainly popped last week because I've got a double, triple top area, broke out of a base and just kept running. Looks like a long one, too. This is wave three, so it's extended into a channel top, it looks like, unless momentum carries it further, but it may need to rest. Copen pop, pullback, and the pullback comes on low volume with really good technicals. Keep an eye on this one. I'm hearing some big things this year from this company. Right now, the angle of the set looks like that. I'm looking for a move to three and four. Kura comes out of a base and a long downtrend. <clears throat> pulls back and test breakaway gap coil and pop up Friday, but it didn't finish well. Nevertheless, above 23, the targets at 27 and 31. LBPH popped and pulled back and put a swing on it. Really hasn't done much. I think it just needs to need some time to get going, but once it does, it gets exploded to the low to mid 30s. MAX, beautiful inverse head and shoulders type back running bottom. Broke through a triple top. It's spiking now into the 19 range. Um, the target is upwards of mid, mid and high 20s. MDXG came out of a base, flag, pop, test the trend line, forming a coil right here. If it pops, this is going to be 11 and 13. This might be a good swing. MGNX broke out of a consolidation there with a breakaway, mini wedge, rising channel, and now flag. 27 target. MRSN coming off the lows. Steady trend up near resistance. Gets through here. We might see a run to first six and a half and then eight and a half. MRUS, beautiful long term base, long term. And this is now a new all time high territory, but extended. I don't know how far they can take it, but it looks like mid to high 50s may be doable. MRVI Friday had a big day, 26 million shares exploded for 64%. And this may be a key breakout across long-term declining tops line, which could lead to um, 9 and a half, 10, and then 11 and a half, 12. NKTX broke out of a rounding base and spiked, then pulled back to test, made a nominal new high and backed off again. For me, at this point, it's an ascending bull coil of sorts. You take that out, looking at 17. Nanox exploded for two days literally, and literally went from uh, 7 to 14 and doubled. Now the pullback towards the um, eight and a half range to nearly fill the gap, but to retest the breakout point, a little lower than that perhaps. But I'm not happy with this pullback, and I would wait to see a price buying surge reversal. Um, NRDS, 
spikelet flow, little coil pop flag, a one, two, three, four. And this is one, two, three of five, I believe. Should we get to 17? And we look for 20. Nutanix, been one of my favorites all year, broke out here. We put a swing on it, just kept going. It's moved from the high 20s to low 30s into the $60 range. We're talking now 65 plus. NTR8 broke out, put a tech trader swing on it. It kept going. It's in a beautiful rising channel and it looks higher to me. And I now look for mid 70s. OCOL popped across the declining top sign through the moving averages and retested and now exploded literally from three and three quarters to reach $10 on Friday. $10 breaks it out above key resistance as well. And this stock could be headed into the low to mid teens. ORIC pulled back to test the moving average and what looks like a one, two, three, four. A fifth wave takes me to 13 and a half and then 15 and a half. Oscar going dynamite and the breakout across the basing pattern or large inverse head and shoulders has it, it was here. It then went from nine and a half to 17, 18 and a half, sorry. And it looks to me like it might be headed even higher. Wouldn't be shocked to see low and then mid 20s. Puma breaks out of a long base as well. And it's forming a wedge in here. I like to look at this one. I think it reaches eight and 10. And pins broke out. We put a swing on it. The stock has been great since October when it was trading in mid 50s. It reached 119 the week before last and pulled back gently. I like the overall look. If it extends, and that's a one, two, three, four, a fifth wave might take you to as high as 135.40. PTG protagonist is another biotech that had a big run and then a hard pullback, and now it's in another run and a beauty. But it is at resistance. Should this get to 30, this could be rocket fuel into the mid to high 30s. RV, RVVG, beautiful base, flagged here after breaking it out, or should I say, in, within a nice yet, yeah, a flag. Broke out in a wedge, popped again and pulled back and tested, hit the channel bottom and exploded off of it. The way this looks to me, I think it's got more upside. Let's see if we can test 21 and a half, 22. RNA tech trade swing broke out. We put a swing out. It's been steady higher ever since. Our next target is 16 and 18. Root, something new. Long downtrend. Pop platform. Exploding this week up. Now, six days in a row, particularly the last two days on big volume. Um, looking for much higher. And I might put, a, and I have a new swing on this one. My target now is 25 and then 40. How about that for a swing? Let's say NA coming out of a big base, or it appears it might be it's set to do that. If it gets to this level, look out. Above nine, we could, could see the stock at 12 and even 15. Starbuck is the other shipper I was talking about earlier. Nice base, potential move to test 25, maybe next we get to that, 28. Seed, a massive move, a great earnings report, finally took off. And you can see eight out of the nine, last nine days, the stock has been up. We need to consolidate in here. But if it does, the next targets are seven, nine, and 11 and a half. SCRA. Pop wedge, falling wedge, larger coil, a wedge, breaks out, reaches the high. If you get to that, this is a rocket fuel, but it's very thin, be careful. SGHT, it plunged, ran up from the inverse head and shoulders, breakout, and now falling wedge. I like to look at this one, keep an eye on it. I think five and a half, seven and nine, all potential targets on this one. Um, software stock, Silk Road, after plunging in October, I believe on earnings. It's moved up steadily and rising channel ever since. It's taken it from 6 to 18. My follow through target is mid 20s. Solid bio, long downtrend, breakout, wedge pop, another wedge pop, and another little flag in here with an engulfing bullish reversal day. I'm now looking for 12 and 14. SLNO popped and formed a coil. We put a swing on it and eventually made it from um, the low around 23, 22 into the $50 range, and I think it's not done yet. 55.60 target. Snow, nice base, breakout, and stair stepping higher. My next target is going to be 329, another 100 points from here. No kidding. S S O N O. For a long time, we were in long this stock, and then 
went short. The bottom line is at this point, it's got a left shoulder, a head and a right shoulder and broke out and has a wedge pattern. Very solid look for a potential swing to 22 and 25. SPRY hammered in September, bounced up from the right hand extended um, pattern with a breakout and now a steady rising channel. Triple top target is nine and a half, three quarters. This Q or block, inverse head and shoulders or V bottom with a right hand extension broke out Friday as well. Through a double triple top, looking for a test of that level at around 80, uh, 88. SRTS, um, we, one of my favorites in here where it went from like two, two to three zone into the high teens and got creamed on the Banerjee board and never looked back to the downside. One, two, three, four, five waves down and finally a reversal. You can see it's been in a good rising channel ever since it reached 179 in November. Last week reaches high 538. So it's tripled, but it's at resistance. Should it get through here? I would look for six and a half and maybe as high as eight. SSNT, pop wedge, pop larger wedge, and pop flag. Intriguing stock. Can be thin. It is thin. But watch carefully for any move above 17. STLA, rising channel. Stellantis or Chrysler is now at the highest level ever reached in the stock history. And now reaching into the high 20s with an extension, I think, 29.30. ST. TTK, pop flat, rising wedge, pop flag. Keep an eye on this one too, over 11. I'm looking for 14 and 18. SWTX spiked wedged and then just kept channeling up. If it continues to do so, my target is 58. SYRS comes out of the base of wedges, pops, and now has a coil. Got to show you this chart because it's bullish. Good, good technicals too. Should it pop the coil? Uh, nine and a half and 11 and a half for targets. TIL and the Chinese Education Group, a nice rising pattern broke out of a flag recently and now pulled back. My target, 17. TILK, I really like this little junior um, te telecom company. Well, no, no, it's healthcare services, sorry. You would think it was this, but it's not. Base, breakout, flag, pop, retest, pop, flag, and breakout. First target is four, second target is five and a half, six. TCOM, that just broke through a triple top uh, late late in the week, and I looked for an extension with targets at 50 and 58. Teva, also coming out of a big base, massive four-year base, which could really support a big move. I'm now looking for 17. TLSI exploded in December, and it's been coiling ever since, getting tighter and narrower. And if it does pop, 12 and a half, three quarters is your target. TMDX with a big breakaway move after a little bit ugly little to decline last year um stalled and then kept running and now this is the kind of stock that i think has energy to me a huge number it's 84 target is 100. tsvt downtrend broken right there falling wedge and popping a flag one two three four fifth wave target eight uber i've been long uh i've been talking long uber since 29 it reached 79.80. It's 150% off the area where we first gave it to you. 81.86 was the highest. Now that it's through everything at all time highs, like I said to you then, I thought over could be triple digits. It's getting there. Next target, 88. Urban, another retailer with a fantastic chart. One, two, three, four, and a fifth way is well on the way near the top of the channel. It's gone from 18 to 45. There is a lot of longer term resistance right up here. But should it get through this range, it's going to go vertical into the 50 range. Vico, base, breakout, pullback, retest, rising channel, through resistance. You can see it. I think right now it's headed for a test of that area up around 43. Vera, overbought, extended. Well, what, what momentum on this one? It's gone from 14 to 50, more than tripling, and yet it doesn't look done, does it? Uh, Friday was a down day for it, but I gotta tell you, this kind of momentum is pretty impressive. You might see 5860. VINC coming out of a base, a long one, with a massive explosive move early in the week last week, taking it from 170 to three, 370, basically doubling, and then 
continuing to impress through four. Watch for a consolidation set up in a fourth wave. One, two, three. We get a fourth. The fifth could take you to six or seven. Vista breaks finally out of a multi-month ascending bull coil. It goes vertical for seven days before bull backing off Friday. Eventually, though, I think it's, you can see mid 40s. Viking, one of my old favorites, popped the flag. We put a tech trade to swing on it. It made it from the mid teens to the low 40s, I think. Nope, 38.68, not quite there yet. My low 40s is my target. VRNS, rising channel, coil, pop, flag. You can see resistance right there at 52, my target 55. VRT in a similar pattern with a rising channel. Extension could take you to 70. VSD is also similar, but it's also made that move. Top of the channel target accelerated. Careful on this one, but extension 53, 55 potential. VTRS breaks out of a long base, is accelerating here. My target's 15 and a half. XBL Logistics had a, a, a difficult day Friday, but it came way back off that low. Finished with a big positive tail. I think we go into the mid 130s and then 145.50. YMAB broke out a flag right here and that kept extending. It looks terrific. That should have been a swing. I don't know why I didn't do it, but hey, my target's 19 and a half. And 60 finally on the long side, as you know, has been a favorite of mine for a year or two. What a nice chart now, possibly being taken private in the 14.15 range. We'll see. Taking a look at some boxes of shirts before we finish up. Let's do it. Let's start with ADM. After breaking down from a long top, the stock's got perfect bear wedge, something to consider on the short side. AEHR, boy, AEHR just got hammered. Head and shoulder top, rolled over. One, two, three, four. Wait for it's forming. It may not be done until it gets down to 10, 11. Akamai, breaking a big rising channel with a downside thrust. I would like to see some consolidation first before shorting it, but it looks like it may be headed down towards 98, even 88. AMN, well, what can I tell you about this one? A massive top, a breakdown, a rising wedge right to resistance. One, two, three, four, and a big fifth wave down with a breakaway gap has crushed the stock this week. ATGE broke down wedge, and now it's, you know, the break broke out of the wedge. Uh, but the key support right now is 44. Underneath that, you might see 41 and high 30s. CAR, also a massive top, hammered until Friday when it finally bounced the support. At my target in the 97 range. If it does extend downward, next target could be um, 87 and 75. CEIX, tech trade a swing short. This is a um, massive top breakdown. I'd love to see a little bounce to get short on it. We'll move into the, let's call it high 60s and low 60s. CMT got hammered, and then it's been in a multi-month bear coil. If this breaks this level, it could get hammered into the um, mid-teens. Coco, a tech trader swing short, head and shoulder top breakdown, now snap back entry opportunity. Right to the trend line, beginning to back off. Now, obviously, if it breaks up through 23 and a half, 24, you're, you're covering. But any move below Friday's low, below 20 and a half, could send this into the high teens and even low to mid-teens. CQP, um, potential head and shoulder top, but it is only a guess. It depends on the price of oil. If oil goes down, this could be in the mid 40s. FLNC broke and broke hard last week. After forming a massive topping type pattern, I put this on my watch list for a short side. My targets now on this one are going to be about 12. Um, FLYW, a large bear coil, tried to pop out Friday. Only to reverse, be careful. If it falls, we'll see 20 and maybe even 18 or less. Fox Factory, tech trade a swing. Well, I don't think I actually put a swing short on it. But it sure looked like I should have, huh? Massive top, mo broke multiple top bottoms, and formed the flag underneath that, and finally got crushed on Friday for 26% in one day. INMD similar pattern and that's coming down out of that too a breakdown underneath 18 and a half could send us really into the low teens jill i think trade a swing short i believe that if they're coming down and forming a bear flag it may lower lows 
but it did bounce uh, unless this gets above 28 um and that's uh, i would cover but if it does doesn't the rollover could take us to 21 to 19. lite break down bear coil that's all you need to know if it breaks this coil it's going lower the target is 41. lnth broke to the upside on friday and it and, but it didn't break through secondary resistance so i'll retain it for now it probably should have been covered mirm this is a left shoulder head right shoulder again easy stop over at 30. Um, if it breaks down though we're going to look at 25.6 maybe 22.3 new york times broke down from the bear flag and slipped underneath the trend line right there it looks very dangerous to me to move to high 30s and mid 30s qualis topped came down is back to resistance here as back near support i should say if it holds here great then you're looking for a bounce and maybe an entry up if it's a bounce on low bond but look at the red technicals deteriorating um, stock uh, ultimately could be 133. rambus the semiconductor group long up-term uptrend broken with a gap and now a bear wedge i'm looking for 48 and a half and then 41. and finally ttwo broke down bounced around and slipping it doesn't look good underlying technicals look terrible i'm looking for a move to 144 and 133. and that's it for me folks an extensive look at the longs the shorts the underlying technicals the indices and a lot of the etfs um, important stuff for next week's um, trading week. So let's review this carefully. If you have any ideas, you'll know what to do. You, I give you uh, the targets on most of these, not the stuff necessarily, but if you do need that, always let me know. For now, have a great rest of your weekend. This is HB signing off and enjoy.